Now we're going to take a look at systems of equations. So systems of equations are sets of more than one equation and more than one variable. So generally what we have is two equations with two variables. To make sense of this, suppose you're selling cookies and brownies for a school fundraiser. You paid $43 for all of the goodies and you're a good enough salesperson to sell all of them for $71, but not very good because you forgot to keep track of how many of each you sold. You remember that the cookies sold for $2 and the brownies sold for $3 and that you paid $1 for every cookie and $2 for every brownie. So with the information we have, can we figure out how many brownies we sold and how many cookies we sold? Well, it certainly would have been much easier had we kept track when we sold them. But luckily, there is a way to find out how many brownies and how many cookies we sold. And we can do that through using a system of equations. A system of equations is a set of equations, generally two equations with two variables. Uh, an example of what that might look like, we can see here. Um, and so now we need to make an equation like this for our cookie conundrum. So we're going to do this a little bit quickly, but if you feel a little bit confused, you can watch our other video on creating equations from word problems, which you can see here. So we know that we paid $43 in total. And from that $43, we paid $2 for every brownie, so that gives us 2B, and $1 for every cookie, so that gives us C. Now we sold them all for $71, and from that, we paid $3 for every brownie, and two dollars for every cookie. So that gives us 71 equals 3b plus 2c. So now what we have here is our final system of equations for this scenario. Now we have to solve our system of equations. There are three ways to solve systems of equations. Elimination, substitution, and graphing. Elimination will be our go-to method. Substitution always works but takes a little bit longer. And graphing we only use in special cases. To start with elimination, our equations have to be lined up. Now, in our cookie conundrum as it is, our equations are already lined up. But let's suppose we had a system of equations that wasn't lined up. So the example we see here is actually the same set of equations we had before in our cookie conundrum. However, we've just moved it around so it's not aligned. So the process of realigning is actually very simple. See, we just need to move that 3b over to the other side. To do that, we just add 3b to both sides. And then what we get down at the bottom here is our 3b over our 2b plus 2c over our c, and then we have our full equation properly aligned and ready to solve. So we haven't done anything special yet. We've just arranged it to make it easy to solve. So now that we have it aligned, uh, we need to match variables so that we can eliminate them. So here, it's going to be very easy to match the c's. And to do that, we see we could just multiply the second equation by negative 2 here. And when we do that, we get the second equation becomes negative 4b minus 2c equals negative 86. And with that, if we now realign our new equation with the other one, and we add them together, what we get putting them together is negative b, and then the key part is these two c's cancel, which is exactly what we wanted from the start. And we get negative b equals negative 15. And with that, we, we easily say b equals 15. Great, we know how many brownies we've sold. Go us. Now we need to find how many cookies we've sold. So to do that, we, uh, when we already have one of the variables that we've solved for, it's easy to find the other. We just take the solution we have, here is b equals 15, and we plug into either of our two equations. Here we're going to do 2b plus c equals 43. Uh, and from that, we can solve for, in this case, how many cookies we sold. So that would look like 2 times, and then we plug in our value for b, 15, plus c, our unknown, equals 43. And we're just going to solve that equation. And simply, we get c equals 13 after doing some algebra. And there we go. We solved our cookie conundrum. Now, I mentioned there are other ways to solve systems of equations. We've used elimination in this case, uh, and in most cases, you should use elimination. The SAT sets up the test so that elimination is fastest and easiest for most problems. However, sometimes it's hard to find variables that will eliminate well. In those cases, we want to use substitution, which takes longer but will always work. So now we're going to uh, try to solve our cookie conundrum using substitution. In general, the method of substitution is solving for one variable and one equation, taking the expression you get from there, and substituting it into the other equation. So then you have one equation with one variable, and you solve, just like you would in the general. 
So let's apply this to our cookie conundrum. So we can start by solving for an, a variable in either equation. In this case, we're going to start with the second one here, but we could have done the other one as well. And to solve, it's pretty simple. We subtract 2b from either side. We get c equals 43 minus 2b. And so now we have our expression, which is equal to c. So, so to substitute, we take that expression, 43 minus 2b, and we plug into the first equation here, and wherever we see uh, c, we plug in 43 minus 2b. So that's going to look like this over here. And so from here, now we have one equation with one variable, which is b, and we can solve. So we solve, it looks like uh, 3b plus 86 minus 4b equals 71. Just after doing some simplification, uh, combining like terms and subtracting over 86 here, we're going to get negative b equals negative 15. Now, which clearly we have b equals 15. Hooray, we've solved the cookie conundrum again, now this time using substitution. Okay, great, putting it all together. We know that we can start by solving using elimination, which is gonna be the easiest usually. If that doesn't work, we can try using substitution. And only in special cases are we gonna try solving using graphing, which we'll look at in the next video. Hope you liked the video. If you wanna hear more and see what else we're up to, hit like and subscribe, and see a new video coming up from Point Avenue every week. If you want to talk to us, hear more about what we're doing, or have any questions, email us at contact at pointavenue.com. Bye!